Association at the Ebujan Theater. A delegation comprising officials of the College of Management and Information Technology from Nigeria has recently called on the Minister of Higher Education, Research and Science and Technology at his office. The visit provided the delegation and higher education ministry officials the platform to discuss a host of development issues. Rohi Bite has details in this report. Seat of the Chairman of Council of the American International University and College and the College of Management of Information and Technology in the Gambia was prompted by the laying of the foundation for the College of Management and Information Technology. This new development is part of the call for the Ministry of Higher Education to decide science and technology for the private sector to invest in the country's education sector so as to contribute to the development of the country through providing quality education. The introduction of higher education up to university level is said to have great impact on the development process of the country, a drive that the American International University of West Africa has been strengthening by providing scholarship for Gambians. The university sponsored 40 students, Gambian students, with full, fully covered scholarship. They are about to graduate. 40 in the area of medicine, in various disciplines, in, the, in, the, in, the, in various uh, uh, um, specialization of the field of medicine. This year, Dr. Shukla extending his generosity and, the generosity and the generosity of his university, they have again given us 30 more scholarships for Gambians. So the, the bad graduating now will have 40 graduates who are being educated free. And they have given us 30 more. Idrissa Manjob is the man behind their coming to the Gambia. He runs a private equity firm called EM Holding and has been partnering many foreign businesses to the Gambia. Our journey started when we wanted to put a flour mill in the Gambia. I went to Nigeria to, to make a presentation to his team. It didn't, it didn't work out. But then Rufai in the process became what I call a Gambia file, somebody that loves the Gambia. He, keep, um, he kept coming, hoping that one day he'll find something, something to do. And uh, we are very proud to be involved with this project together with the um, American International University. And uh, in that, I want to now respond to the call that the government has been making to the, to the local, local private sector. And uh, the private sector, when it comes to education, it's not just for investment. As part of the visit, the officials of the AIU and CMIT were introduced to the programs and plans of the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology in a view of gaining support from, from partners for the effective implementation of projects. After a thorough presentation, the officials of the AIU and CMIT expressed their commitment to support as well as point out key areas that the Ministry could consider. One of the things which was presented today was the Kanilai Institute of Science and Technology. Let me put it briefly. We want to see it succeed. We want to empower that. We want to empower the students because ultimately it's going to benefit the country. American International University and CMIT, through CMIT, can provide lecturers who are giving uh, can provide teaching facilities, can provide uh, lecturers and professional teachers. Educational tourism is one of the most, it's one of the highest earner of tourism revenue. Educational tourism. There are countries outside of Africa whose revenue from tourism, 70% of it comes from educational tourism because there are only educational states. When a school is established and the doors of the school are open to foreigners, the students come. They stay all year round. They spend money all year. Your tourists come and spend only two months and go back. Partnership like this can boost the Ministry of Higher Education besides science and technology's drive of providing quality education for Gambians as well as providing highly educated people for the country's job market. Rohi Bite, 
GRTS. The Khalifa of Serin Murtala Mbake Ibn Hadim Rasul, Serin Mamor Mbake, has completed a three-day visit to the Gambia. During his visit to Banjul, the venerable religious figure also took time to pay a courtesy call on the Imam Ratib of Banjul al Haji Cherno Ali Umaska. The meeting seeks to further bolster the existing interreligious ties among Senegambians for better cooperation and development. Modu Bajan has the rest of the report. During a short trip to the Gambia meant to meet and dialogue with Murids, other Muslims and Gambians at large, the Khalifa of Serin Murtala Mbake, Serin Mamur Mbake, pays a courtesy call to the country's Imam Ratib, Cherno Ali Umaska. Both scholars spoke at length during the meeting in relation to bettering the already acknowledged interfaith tolerance in the country. In this light, Imam Ratib Ka emphasized that Islam is solely a tolerant religion and therefore added that belonging to different tarihas or Islamic sects is no unusual thing in the Senegambi region. He therefore thanked his religious counterpart for the bold gesture and as such urged all Muslims and Gambians at large to live by the teachings of the country's religions. The visiting Murid scholar has during the engagement invited Imam Ratib Ka to Tuba, given that the invitation which was meant for His Excellency President Jami may not materialize due to the President's numerous activities. As mentioned during the deliberations at the meeting, educational issues will be key during Imam Ratib Ka's prospective visit to Tuba. Therefore, Tuba's Islamic education system which spans from nursery to university level and includes fields such as medicine will also be discussed by the two sides. Serin Mahmoud Mbake also thanked President Jami for his stance in Islam, especially his contribution to the annual Magal of Tuba. The representative of Murids in the Gambia, Pab Demba Job, who also spoke at the gathering, registered similar sentiments. He further reaffirmed that this courtesy call by a high-profile Murid figure to the country's Imam Ratib, a member of the Tijania Brotherhood, speak volumes in relation to the cooperation required in smoothening religious coexistence. In as much as this visit by Serin Mahmoud Mbake is concerned, it did not come by chance, as it is an order to continue what is in place by his late father, Serin Murtala Mbake, whom until his demise in 2004 had visited the Gambia and many countries around the globe, there in setting up settlements called Ker Serin Tuba, meaning Serin Tuba's house. This, as stated by Murid officials, has no separate purpose from that of the Marabu's visit, which seeks only to further forge closer ties among Murids, other Muslims, and all Gambians by extension, regardless of their faith and religious stance. Done at a time when interfaith violence is a boring issue elsewhere around the globe, Serin Mahmoud Mbaki's visit to Imam Ratib Alaji Ali Umaska may solely improve the already established ties between the sister countries of the Gambia and Senegal. Modu Bajan, GRTS News. We will be back with news from outside the Gambia after the break. Rewi Gambia, Tamane, Bentum Reume Ote, the Gambia Radio and Television Services, GRTS. GRTS Staff Association, King Italy, His Excellency the President, Chef Professor, Al Haji Dr. Yahya AJJ Jame, No Faskene Sumbu, Jinkadlum Banquet Dinner, A Grand Dance with a Difference, Bufikija Amsufi Muse Amsah, on the 23rd of May, and on the 24th of May, 2014, Sekti Gipenchami Hall, featuring the now happening Queen of Balakh, Titi. Titi, Titi Safnepa, Titi, Tamane Titi, Pare Raja Kepenchami Hall. You've never seen her on stage like this before. Titi, by popular demand. Deeper the joy most totally. Anna Kaindanan, the artist, Fiji Birumi. Tickets, Gala, Platinum, $60,000. Diamond, $50,000. Gold, $40,000. And the individual, $1,000. Grand dance ticket, $500. And three hundred dollars flat for all reservations please call 991-1992-365-5518-203-1850-682-9536 Senureo Gambia welcome back 
Rival groups in South Sudan's long-running conflict have agreed to a ceasefire deal. The agreement seeks to bring a peaceful end to five months of ethnic fighting in the country. This is the first time President Salva Kiir is meeting face-to-face -face with his former vice president and bitter political rival, 